G'day, I'm Mark from Self Sufficient Me and I wanted to have a chat with you guys about backyard pecan growing today. This is a great opportunity, it's nice weather, we've got a bit of a breeze, the pecans are ripe, or most of them are, and you know, what a fantastic time to whack in a YouTube video just for you. Rightio. Now, why did I get into pecan growing? Well, it's a subtropical type of nut and you can't grow a heck of a lot of nuts around here. I mean, you can grow the macadamia nut pretty easily. You know, this is Australia after all, but I've always wanted to grow pecans because they're such a beautiful tree for a start. They should be easy to grow here and I find that they are. So they're an excellent fruit tree, nut tree for us to grow because it's you know natively grows well and we don't have to struggle trying to adapt it to the climate here or do anything tricky it just grows like anything here and we love pecans one thing i am yet to do is make a pecan pie a beautiful american pecan pie is something that i've always wanted to make from our own pecans and it's taken a little bit of a while to get here but i think finally we've got the tree to a stage where we're able to harvest enough nuts to probably make several pecan pies and I'm looking forward to that. If you've got any ideas or recipes or anything like that or you can point me somewhere on uh, a good way or something else to do with pecans or how to make a pecan pie, let me know in the comments below. All right, so let's get into it. This tree here that I'm in front of it is about six years old and it's a fairly modern type of tree you know i know some people are thinking well pecans might take 10 to 12 years sometimes 15 years before they produce fruit and that can be true but in a lot of the modern pecan varieties and grafted trees they don't take that long this one was fruiting at about four but it only maybe got five or six nuts the first season at about four at five we probably got 50 or more and this season you know we got around well it's probably around 100 or more nuts on the tree they say that pecans really mature and start getting into good production at around 10 to 15 years so i'm pretty happy with where we're at at the moment because it's producing plenty enough for our family and even probably some for the neighbors now i'm doing something a little bit different here with this pecan tree i'm trying to keep it fairly small at least under 10 meters maybe even less than that pecans can get humongous they can get 25 meters tall and i don't want that happening and probably neither, neither does my neighbor to be honest so i'm going to keep this pruned and i've deliberately let it bush out if you have a look here i have uh, the trunk is fairly short and it's branching out for a purist pecan grower they're probably horrified um, because the best way to grow a pecan tree is give it a big strong leader a nice long trunk and let the tree you know shape up like a proper tree and not bush it out because that type of that way of doing business can make the tree subject to splitting and dropping branches or breaking off in high wind and that type of thing well i'm willing to take that risk because i'm going to keep the tree fairly small anyway and so i'll run that risk and i think by keeping the tree fairly small and not letting it just grow as big as it wants that'll limit the risk of the branches or anything like that breaking the other thing with this particular tree is it's self-fertile means that we didn't even have to plant a second tree pecans are a and b varieties a little bit like avocados you can you can plant an a and a b variety and they will cross pollinate and it will produce more fruit even with self-fertile trees like this one it does help to have a a opposite variety to help cross pollinate and that's why we planted this little one here but i'll also keep this tree very small that one there's about two years old at the moment 
Pecans grow really well in the US and Australia. They prefer a climate range between subtropical and temperate. So they don't like it really hot like tropical and they don't like it really cold. So there's a number of states in the US where they grow really well and just about most of Australia, pecans will grow fairly well except for probably up in the tropics. What I love about pecans is how tolerant they are of just about any type of soil. Underneath here we've got horrible clay soil and pecans are fine as long as the clay doesn't get too sodden and wet and in this case it'll hit clay but because we're on a fair, fairly good slope and it's not down the bottom of the property the tree roots won't sit in, in water and they won't rot so this is fine so even though the soil is hard and awful apart from the probably about the first foot which is topsoil this tree is just going gangbusters the roots can get down or well, the tap root can get down a good seven meters which is pretty huge and i believe the most of the roots though especially the feeder roots are within the top one meter of soil so take that into account if you're going to plant it near a house or something like that being a big tree you might find roots it's a fairly extensive root system it could you know upset driveways or houses or foundations and that type of thing the fruit develops really quickly and i'm quite amazed at how like a nut a hard nut can develop so quickly and and whole um, in such a short amount of time practically see this is a thing with pecans well mine anyway it, it it they're deciduous so even though i'm in a hot climate in winter here they will drop the pecans will drop their leaves and you won't see it come back to at least mid-spring about mid-spring or even towards the end of spring it'll start getting its leaves which is really late and then it'll grow like hell through summer it'll bloom some inconspicuous little flowers and then from those flowers this nut forms and it forms really quickly so that by the end of summer and in, into autumn your nuts are already ready that's pretty cool and pretty fast as far as overall growing tips go I can tell you from the beginning I haven't done a real lot to this tree they seem to be very hardy and don't need a lot of extra fertilizer or care what I'll do is I'll throw some animal manure might be chicken manure quail manure horse manure well rotted and not green around the base of the tree within about a foot from the trunk I'll do that once a year probably sometimes I might even miss a year um, I might throw a little bit of blood and bone, commercial blood and bone, the organic stuff around the base of the tree or even some organic uh, dried chicken manure that you can get like Rooster Booster. But apart from that, I don't do a heck of a lot. I do make sure it gets plenty of water through summer. And one other thing, when I first planted the tree, I did make sure it was well mulched. I don't need more because the tree can deal with, with grass and, and a little bit of water loss now. It doesn't matter. but. When I first planted it for the first couple of years, I made sure that I mulched around the tree nice and thickly so that the grass wouldn't compete with the tree roots and the feeder roots, and that got it off to a really good start. It's definitely one of my favorite fruit nut trees to grow in the garden. Actually, I'd prefer it to a macadamia, to be honest. As far as pests go, you don't get a lot of problems in Australia. I know in the US you can get a few other diseases and pests. Here in Australia, the main problems are probably rust on the leaves, which I wouldn't worry about. Um, I'll see if I can find some. Rust and spots here on this small tree here. You know, that type of thing, I wouldn't worry at all about. That's nothing, just leave it go. Um, bit of fungi, you know, bit of target spot, whatever. But most of the time, you just get some discoloration you can get a bronze orange bug but a green one that can sting the fruit and damage it but you don't see that a lot you can get leaf hoppers that can suck the plant um, mowing around the tree helps that and not letting the grass get too long um, grasshoppers that type of thing but to be honest I don't see a lot of problems and definitely would not require any type of pesticide that's the plus of growing in the backyard. If you're growing it in, in a commercial environment, then they unfortunately have to spray because they need every bit of fruit and nut they can get.
but we don't. All right, let's pick a few and have a taste test. Now it's interesting how they how they form and then when they're ready they just they come apart from this husk and then you're left with this hard shell on the outside obviously the low ones are easy to get and that's why I like to bush this tree out the top ones well I might have to either get a ladder or let them fall to the ground last season I just left them fall and eventually went around and picked them up okay so I've got two I haven't got a nutcracker but I want to I'm just keen to quickly taste it on camera just to show you live uh, what I think of it I'll put two together brute force there we go mmm milky pecan -y tasting just like any pecan except better because it's homegrown so fresh and wonderful mm. I mean that's a bit of a crude break I know I mean a nutcracker would be a lot better but you get the idea definitely recommend growing these at home yourself well there you go that's my pecan growing we caught it in prime time I really wanted to show you guys this tree I've been waiting for it to ripen and get to this point all summer so I could bring you this video I hope you enjoyed it. If you've got any questions, leave them below. Don't forget my blog. Visit that, selfsufficientme.com. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye for now.